In this video, I'm going to show you how we get more horsepower out of our electric motorcycles. All right, so we're in the Mad Scientist Lair. Behind me, we got a Dynojet 250 setup. On it is our Denzel Samurai. This thing has a 72 volt battery, 40 amp hours of capacity, and it's using a Kelly controller with a Bluetooth uh, dongle in it. That's gonna allow us to connect to it via Bluetooth. And that's gonna make things a lot easier. So essentially, what you guys gotta do in order to increase the power of any electric vehicle is you do it through the controller. and by and by doing it through the controller, that means you're going to have to do it through the, the software that's provided by the manufacturer. In this case, Kelly, it's going to be an Android app. So inside there, we're going to be able to change a bunch of parameters that's going to basically allow us to change how the bike rides and also its maximum horsepower, speed, how the throttle comes on, how the torque comes on, all kinds of stuff. So let's jump right into it. All right, so we're up on the dyno. We've got the Denzel strapped down. You can see it's at 82 volts. You know, you could sit there and charge it all the way up to 84, but that's not really a fair test. Of course, you're going to make slightly more power at the fully charged battery. This is almost fully charged, so you don't want to do it on a low battery, but just be aware that you're going to get higher numbers if you're on a dyno with a, with a freshly topped off pack versus, you know, one that's more closer to its nominal rating, which... These float around in the 80 volt area for a while before they start dropping. So just something to think about. First things first, let's get a baseline. So I got my little clicker here, got my dyno up. We're going to just do a baseline run of what this thing is at like right now. And then we're going to go in there and see if we can get some more juice out of it by using this tablet, which is an Android tablet that will connect to the controller via Bluetooth. So, get it up to a couple miles an hour. Ooh, that might be a little much. I'm gonna start the test. is our dyno chart. Let me see, I wanna make sure you guys are seeing this. So, as you can see, with electric motors, they start off with a buttload of torque right in the beginning, and then the torque falls, hopefully at a rate that is, uh, I guess, low enough that the horsepower still climbs, or at least stays level. So this is actually a really good looking dyno chart for an electric bike. I've seen quite a few and this looks really good because you have the horsepower climbing the entire time. That gives a good feeling for the rider. So a lot of times you'll notice that, you know, horsepower will stay level um, with electric motors. But with this, the way this is set up right now, we're actually gaining horsepower throughout the RPM band, which is really cool. And uh, you'll, like I said, you'll notice that the, the, the torque peaks way early and falls down. So we do have a max torque of 32, but your usable torque is probably somewhere in the 15 to 20 range, right? So just keep that in mind because the max torque isn't necessarily uh, something that you're gonna be using. Oh, and we made 8.3 horsepower and 32 foot pounds, which is not bad at all. Um, but let's see if we can get a little bit more juice out of it. All right, so we're going to use this Kelly app. It's not exactly the most sophisticated thing on the planet. We're going to connect via Bluetooth. We're going to click connect. We're going to pick the right one, which is this one. And uh, we're going to read it. Okay, now... In here, you're going to notice all kinds of stuff. 
a lot of this stuff, if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Um, but let's just go over some of the basic ones. Current, current, right? So what do we, what do we need? We need voltage and we need current. But the voltage is fixed from your battery pack. So if you're selecting a battery pack, if you have a choice, if you're building one of these, you want the highest possible voltage that you can get that will fit and is readily available. But typically speaking, higher voltage means more engine RPM, means more power. You can throw as much amps as you want at something, but it's not gonna increase how fast the motor spins. And depending on your application, that might be a problem. So the higher the voltage, generally speaking, the better. Well, that's fixed. But inside here, we can adjust the current. And uh, some of these settings will allow you to adjust, you know, the forward map, which is basically going to adjust the curve and how it comes on. But that curve was really nice, so I really don't want to touch it. So we're just going to come straight over to the current, and we're going to turn. Let's see what happens if we bring the current percentage up to 100. Let's see what that does. So now we've moved the current uh, to 100. We're going to hit right. Data written successfully, completely. Now we'll do another dyno run and see what happens. We're back for test number two at what I saw was 40 battery amps and now 100% of uh, available current. Now the Kelly's kind of primitive and some uh, controllers are going to have more finite control, but I really do like these Kellys. Their simplicity makes them easy to deal with. And unless you're a rocket scientist like the mad scientist, you know, simple is good, at least for me. Let's get going. Anna. Okay. Back it off a little. Hit it. Okay, so what we got here is we didn't see really any change. As you can see, the graphs are right on top, I mean right on top of each other. Now we got a little bit more torque, but I think I just stabbed the throttle a bit uh, harder than I did last time. So uh, we made 8.3 horsepower this time and 32 foot-pounds of torque. But that's just right at the peak. Really, the graphs are laying right on top of each other. Now, the 8.3 and 8.4 horsepower, I'm going to say that that's basically the same. That's your, you know, you got to have some kind of tolerance. And as you can see, we lost, you know, like a volt already or a half a volt. So that could explain that. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the actual current allowed from the battery and see if that's going to give us some more juice. I'm hoping we can maybe get close to 10. That would be great, because that'd be like a 20% gain from 8.4. We're back in the system. Let's see if we could turn this thing up a little bit more. Uh, we're gonna go for battery amps this time. Let's check this out. Uh, battery current limit. So you gotta look at the specifications of your controller and make sure you're not doing anything bogus here that's gonna burn stuff up, but we're gonna go from 40 to 50. I'm fairly confident that's gonna be okay. Um, and then, so we're looking here, maximum forward speed is at 100%. No need to worry about that. Maximum RPM is at 4,500. And I'm not too concerned about that as it reaches 50 miles an hour a little bit before that. That's plenty of speed for this bike. 
these braking types are all things that you can change like so when you hit this brake it has a brake switch that enables the uh, drag brake on the motor and so that's kind of cool and so there's a bunch of stuff in here you can change but today we're in in search of horsepower so we're just gonna go ahead and set this uh, to 50 and then we're gonna write the code write the params okay data written successfully all right from 40 to 50 battery amps run number three Sounded pretty good. Let's check it out on the uh, old compute pute. I'm gonna pretend like I know what I'm doing. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So, we made more power. So we're on the green line now, this bright green line. As you can see, everything is just sitting right above. So it's very, very uh, consistent with the curve that it makes. And I got just the line floating right above now. And it ended up making 9.8 horsepower at 32 foot pounds yep that's correct so that's pretty rad that's a great improvement um that's a a, a horsepower and a half so it's a 15 or a little bit more than a 15 percent improvement i think we can get more i think we can get more we can get more all right so we're gonna bump it up to 55 All right, that's 55. That's going to be dangerously close to what this bike can put out, and specifically this controller. I think the motor and the battery have plenty of room, but the controller is basically uh, your limiting factor. First, your battery. Then you're going to come to the controller. Then the motor. Normally, the motors will take whatever you throw at them. They just get hot and angry and that kind of thing, but normally what's going to restrict you outright is either going to be the battery doesn't have enough uh, available amperage uh, to deliver, or the controller just cannot pull the current from the battery itself. So with this controller, I think we're about maxed out. Let's see what happens. Thinking we might be over the limit here, but 10 horsepower is good. Let's see if we can get a smidgen over of 10, like 10 and a half, or let's see, let's see. Hit it. Oh, I did it. Yes. As you can see, we're on the red, we're on the red line now. We bumped it up, 10.4 horsepower, 30 foot pounds. Oh my gosh, I am blown away. I did not think it would take that parameter. Let's turn it up some more. Let's turn it up a little more until it faults out. That's what we're out here to do. That's how you make power. Be careful, be careful. But usually these things have protection parameters programmed into them. The controller's not getting too hot. I'm touching it. It's okay. So I think we're good to go. We can turn it up a little bit more. All right. 60. I would be very surprised if this thing doesn't fault out. I think this is run number five. We're at 60 battery amps, according to the Kelly, with 100% of the current available. We haven't changed any of the map settings or anything like that. So we're just gonna see if we can get 
maybe 11 horsepower? I think it's going to fault out. What do you guys think? Comments down below if you think it's going to take this parameter. Here we go. Fault it out. Beep, beep, beep. All right, well, that's okay. So that's what happens with the Kellys, is they give you a little red blinky light. And then we can come over here. Let's take a looksy poo here. Reset error. So basically the controller reset itself. That's why it jumped on the dyno. I think we're gonna see that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back down to 50 for everyday riding. We don't need to be right on the limit. 9.5 horsepower is enough for me. But now we know. So we're at the uh, blue line. And we were making more power, or starting to make more power, and then vroom. So that's uh, when the controller cut out. So red line is basically our max run for the day, starting down at the green. So, ah. Uh, all in all, a success. We gained over 15% power just by uh, changing some parameters inside the controller. Uh, depending on your setup, you might be able to get more than 15%. I know with the EMX that we're building, the user will be able to more than double the power that what we're going to probably ship it with. As, uh, it's buck wild all the way turned up. So... With something like this, 15, 20%, that's great. Really cool uh, experience to be able to sit here and see the dyno numbers and, and tune it and know exactly what, what uh, kind of power we were able to make out of it. So if you like this video, please smash that like button. If you want to see more videos about electric motorcycles, Samurais, EMXs, Altas, please do subscribe. Don't forget to smash that like button. And until next time, as always, Electro out.